Hi, my name is Bonnie Roy, and I feel today I would like to, um, to share my story of how the court system um, basically ruined my life. It started back in 2007 when my ex-husband filed for divorce. Um, within a two-year period, uh, what I thought was justice walking out of the courtroom was everything but that. Um, I lost uh, our family home. Literally everything I owned, clothing, uh, just pretty much everything, and was in a position where I had to find a home where I would um, be losing custody of my two children. Um, as, as an example with that, uh, people can't even begin to comprehend um, the losses that based on a judge's decision and how it can affect your life. And yet at the same time, these judges that are claiming to follow the law and stand up for um, what is right are ruining people's lives left and right. Um, at the point where I was able to finally um, find a, a home for me and my children, I then had to um, try to dig out the financial, financial losses that came along with that. Um, I basically at the same time was also struggling with um, a post-cancer diagnosis and um, suffered a near-death experience and just went through a lot of trauma in that. And so when the judge's order came in, I was thinking in the back of my mind, how am I gonna, how am I gonna survive this? And how am I going to pull my life together when I looked to this judge that was almost periodically even laughing at me in the courtroom and um, threw threats out to my attorney that if um, she would object to anything, that she would never win another case in Carver County. And I just remember feeling like a sense of shock. Um, I just remember um, for a period of probably two years, I started meeting more and more moms that were affected by this court system and just kind of felt like, how can this be happening? And how, how can these stories be so tragic and yet everybody's ignoring our pleas for help? So I started volunteering and just started meeting more and more women that have been involved in the court system and um, our stories are getting out, but they need to be heard and we need to have people in authority step in to help change the current system. And we need lives to um, be healed and the process um, needs to be heard. And I feel that more stories that are gonna come forward um, I feel that the right people, perhaps attorneys and, and judges that do believe in justice will step forward. Um, in that process, I also, um, 10 years later, I'm still digging out of the financial losses and there's a lot of people that even in churches and just people that you meet along the way um, look at you and they're like, how can this be and how can, how can your story be real and yet you almost feel like you're standing behind a glass door screaming for people to help and everybody walks away. Um, and that's where I also know that um, my faith journey has gotten a lot stronger in regards to uh, knowing what gets you through a tragedy. And um, I just feel that my story needs to be heard so that it can help other people. And when I look at um, the tragedies that I went through and the emotional trauma that uh, you try to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. When you're, you know, I've been homeless twice. Um, for a year and a half, I didn't have a car. Um, I applied for medical assistance. I was denied um, for different stipulations um, through the, even the financial aid services through the county. Um, and the list goes on and yet you feel so alone when you're trying to uh, figure out how you're going to get your life together. And because of the people that maybe could have helped or have helped in the past, after a while you just feel like your story also gets lost in that. And so I just feel that um, by getting our stories out we can make a positive change in that. And um, again, I just really feel that the impact that the lives that are being affected in the court system with moms losing children. Um, I almost lost my two children because I didn't have a home. Um, many times this happens to women. Um, they are financially ruined, they're emotionally distraught. No one believes them and I've been in hospitals where women and periodically even their children have attempted suicide. Um, there have been um, acquaintances that I know that 
um, have taken their life because no one believes them. Um, the judges are totally ignoring the state statutes and the laws and totally disregarding um, what the meaning of a life means. And when a judge signs an order, you have to walk out of that courthouse wondering how you're gonna get your life back together. Um, I, in the process, um, got so frustrated that I, you know, 10 years later when I'm still trying to financially pull myself out of this, you know, I'll try to understand what is, the, what is the purpose in this. And I really feel that by bringing my story out with, along with many, many other women that have gone through the same stories and even their children when they turn to drugs and alcohol, it's like, when are people going to step up and say that this is enough? We've gone to legislators, we've gone through people in authority and everybody just walks away because they're trying to figure out, you know, how can I help or you get caught up in that system again and it's like, what, what do we have to do? How many more lives have to be taken before people really, really start taking this more seriously? Um, I just also know that um, children when they're caught up in the realms of divorce and also abuse, they learn to um, just survive, just like how many uh, many of us women have to do that as well. And for people not to step in and come alongside of us to say, like even attorneys to say, you know what, these people have had enough and let's start setting precedents for the judges and the attorneys to hold um, their accountability to do the right thing. And instead of that happening, we get retaliated against um, at one point when I went back to the court system and I wanted the judge to just look at my facts, um, I got retaliated against again and I was slapped $30,000 worth of my ex-husband's attorney fees and I'm like thinking, okay, my income at that point was only $8,000 and now they're slapping $30,000 more on me for questioning a judge's order and all I was asking for them was to look at the facts and it was more devastation and it threw me into another tailspin financially and I'm like thinking I'm already down and out and then I'm going in front of another judge and they retaliated against me even more and the convoluted facts in most people's stories is that when you look at the truth and when you look at the lies they're very different and who are they going to believe and when a mom steps into a courtroom without an attorney when you're trying to put your life together and you have to go up against um, often uh, an attorney that has a lot of clout in the area um, and a lot of prestige, they're not gonna be taken down by someone like, as an example, me that when I went into the court system, I pretty much represented myself. Um, so you come against a system that's very corrupt. Anybody that would honestly say that the, the system is not corrupt I would say I challenged anybody to sit down with my court documents, um, look at how it's affected my life, look at how it's affected um, my children's lives, even though we've, we've worked through a lot of the forgiveness component. But yet at the same time, how do you financially um, heal from such travesty when you, you, you're, you're more or less alone in it on many different aspects? So I really feel that by, um, my story getting out, every person that's going to hear this is going to be able to relate it and will cry out uh, that help needs to step in. These judges need to be held to a higher standard of upholding the law. The attorneys that are getting paid to hide money, to commit fraud, need to be held accountable. And my passion is for, um, for us to start setting precedents for what truth looks like in the court system versus um, what it looks like now in many, many situations. Um, I feel that I wanna re reach out to the hearts of moms that feel like there's no hope um, because I really truly believe that when we come together that um, the hope can unite um, strength and um, the results of healing can take place. Uh, I also wanna reach out to children that have been affected by divorce um, that they need to find a voice, um, often even in the program where there are uh, guardian items that are supposed to stand in for children, 
that need, their voice needs to be heard instead, even when they speak out on the abuse that's being taken um, place, even in a divorce or even in their homes, their, their, their voices are silenced. And instead they're turning to drugs and alcohol um, to numb the pain and their lives are being devastated and often even their best friends probably can't even understand how they're getting through it through that but yet they're also setting them their selves up for a pattern of abuse and um, substance abuse um, drug abuse just like often where women go to because they they can't they can't find help they can't get the support they need and everybody even in the churches are are, um, are closing a blind eye to this um, we walk in and out of church doors and we feel alone um, we feel wrongly judged and the persecution that you face when you're going through such heartache is often more than what I thought I could handle um, but yet my faith grew stronger in knowing that the Heavenly Father was looking down on me and as I walked through this I knew that I would gain my strength by telling my story, by reaching out, and then perhaps using what I learned to help other people. If you want to be a part of the fight, um, just please click below and you will find um, that there's support. Um, people are not going to turn you away and your story will be believed. Um, I believe that by silencing our tears, silencing our voices um, Satan wants to use that and he wants these stories for being stopped for being heard but that's exactly what we have to come against we have to tell our stories we have to take a strong stand in regards to truth and justice and we have to choose that um, when God puts something on our hearts just like how he put it in mind is that I can't sleep at night if I'm gonna walk away and turn a blind eye when I hear more and more stories of people being affected by this tragedy. And until people in our community start rising up and realizing that this is happening in our own counties, it's happening perhaps with people that you know, um, I think our stories need to get out. Um, also, if you want to help um, or you need help or just support in any way, just also please click the link below.